Okay, we're here today with Juke the Prep. The album is the Sophistication album. We're just going to do an in-depth interview with Juke the Prep just to get an idea of what he's got going and what's coming up next and a little insight into who the man is behind the music. Hi Juke, how are you today? I'm doing well, how are you? Great, it's good to see you. Mm -hmm. Like always. Yes. yes. So how is everything with the music coming? I mean, everything is moving right now. You know, we got a, a steady buzz that's been going on this last past year. So we're keeping up with this buzz right now. We got new things coming. So we had to hook up with AV Entertainment to get everything right. Well, I thank you for the opportunity to get a chance to sit and talk with you a little bit. Um, I think I have some questions for you that maybe your fans have or your soon-to-be fans may want to know. So if you don't mind, we'll just talk a little bit and get down to it. Hey, that sounds good to me, yo. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that first came to my mind when I thought about this interview and what I would ask you is just define your music. I mean, my music, it gets really in depth because I grew up in an era where well, it was about R&B, it was about love and you know, and people had passion for the game. It was good music going on. And, like, my music evolved from that because that's what I can remember. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't tuned in so much to the new stuff because it all sounds the same. Yes. So, you know, it's just about bringing back that old era back into a new form, you know, not forgetting about how beautiful our women really are, how great our children are. I did hear some different nuances in your music when I listen and I could hear something different than the typical mm -hmm. rap style of music. So who were some of your musical influences that you drew from when you write and you create your sound? Um, my influences are like, um, I like Nelly, okay. um, I like TLC. I like Jay-Z, Kanye, um, Lupe Fiasco, uh, all the cats in the game, most deaf as well, and uh, Talib Kweli, because these guys are lyrical, you know, and I definitely like following their styles because they have something to talk about, mm -hmm. you know. What do you think separates uh, you from other rappers? What makes you different? Um, it's 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 the passion for the game. It's it's not just about the music. It's about changing people's lives. Okay. You know, being an inspiration to okay, them. Okay, so Juke, you were saying that um, you like to write music with a purpose. Mm -hmm. A song like Self Motivated is rare in this industry. So, what was the inspiration when you wrote this song? What what were you thinking? What was on your mind at the time? I mean, as far as like Self Motivated goes, everybody. Uh, was heard from the recession and um, so I, I wanted to sit back and create something to uplift people and to start working together you know because I think you know everybody lost a job lost their drive so it, it it inspired them to hey look I was here at this uh, point in my life now I have to get self-motivated again and you know, and it it also comes from a different uh, different aspect as far as me as an artist because you know I'm so different with my music that it doesn't sound like the typical rap type music that sometimes I do feel like I'm hated because of that. So I had to implement that in that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's me. It's devoted on the road. You know, it's Maserati Films. It's tragic. We're on the road and, you know, we self-motivated building our brands every day. So that's why that song was written for that. And we actually had some nice metaphors in there. So, okay. you know. The music industry, for anybody that's ever been in it, they know that it's, it's a tough industry. It's not an easy thing to do. You have to have love and passion for that in order to survive in this business. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that that was your calling? Oh, two, when I picked up that microphone, you know, I started experimenting with things and actually my studio was actually inside of a kitchen. You know, that's where I started learning how to write. And that's when, you know, I heard about uh, my uncle, uh, which was over um, 
dog life at that time. He was like, hey, you know, you need to get up with Raw Dog, which was Tragic and Conte. You know, he said, those guys are pretty hot. So, uh, I mean, that's when I, I realized that, hey, listen, I can do it, put your mind to it, and keep driving. But I'm, like, excited about the business part of it. That's what I love because once I get on the, once I start writing, my right brain kicks in. You know, when it's time to get this out, my left brain kicks in. And, and that's just to show every young artist out there, you have to think with both sides of your brain and then for this to come together. So that's when I realized this is my calling. Besides, I have a message. It's, it's not all about the music, though. It's, that's a part of it. But building that network up. You know, to be able to meet someone, it's an honor to meet AV Entertainment. You know, it's an honor for me because you guys are moving around town. I see you guys out there, you know. So, building that network, you know, helping each other out with brands, showing that we are a unit, you know. Because we hear a lot about, hey, you know, Indy doesn't have no market for music. Indy does. They just need some structure. You know, you need people to come together. If you continue to be separated through all this, then... Of course nobody's going to make it, but Indy has a market, so y'all better start paying attention to Indy, <laughs> yo. Speaking of branding, mm -hmm. I've noticed, because I've been watching you, that it's not just about the music with you. Mm -hmm. You're branching out, you're creating a brand, you're building a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I know that you have a clothing line. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, the clothing line is... I came up with the concept to call it preppish because with the prep. I actually I was sitting in my office and I was thinking about it's like okay, should I call because if it's a nice market or urban as well. So I was thinking about it's like okay, well, I don't want to use any profanities and call it prep. <laughs> All right, so so I call it preppish. I mean, with the clothing, you know, we got the polos coming. You know, we got the new gear right here. This is the the V-necks with the little man on it. And that's that's the prep right there. I also got them. I'm gonna let my boy introduce this. He came up with the name for this. What do you want to call this? Oh, the IQ. The IQ beans. So, IQ beans. Just, yeah. We talked about briefly the Sophistication album, mm -hmm. which was your first album mm -hmm. that was released. Tell me a little bit about this album. I'll let you elaborate a little bit on the on the album too. Speaking about sophistication, I thought it was a major album. Um, you got self motivated, which I listen to it every day before I go to work. Um, you got even uh, you got even Chevy Elevated. I love Chevy Elevated. I love sophistication. Uh, it's just a real major album. Um, I think more so, it's good for a kid to listen to something positive. And, and get something from it and gain something from it instead of listening to something so negative. It's good to see different. It's like a fresh breath of air when you listen to it and pop it in. You don't have to worry about flipping through songs and so much cursing. You can kind of just get into it and get to a feel of it. Like, I, I think it's a major album. I really do. You did great work. Man. You know what I mean? Uh, stay positive, bro. Mm -hmm. Change up. Keep doing you. Even like after, like, I let him get the album when I met him, and he's like, uh, and this is devoted, by the way. This is my, this is my right hand man in music. He's the, the eyes and ears on Facebook and Twitter. That's who you'll see moving my page. Um, you know, he came up to me the next day, and he was like, "Yo, man, I noticed that you didn't say not one curse word on the whole album." You know, he's like, I was going to bet all my dollars on Chevy Elevator. I said, oh, he's going to slip up on this one right here. <laughs> he's going to slip yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I would have lost all my money on it, man. I thought that was that one, but you didn't do that. And, you know, to meet this guy, man, it's just like he's a listener, you know, who really understand what good music and lyrical music is about. Okay, the so stories I understand it. you're back in the studio. Mm-hmm. And you're working on your new album. Yeah. And what's the album going to be called? And tell me what we can expect from that album. Oh, man. I ain't ready to release the name of it. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, then Don't just do give it. it. You know, yeah, I ain't going to release it. But I'm, okay. I will tell That's you this, fair. though. 
I will tell you this. I'm about to act an animal on it. <laughs> I might have to let the prep rest for a minute. I'm about to get in depth. Oh, this one song I'm working on. It's gonna get them talking, but you can expect a lot. Will it still be positive? It's just gonna have a little different flavor to it, but it's still gonna stay in that vein of positivity. The spice is gonna be in the gumbo. If I'm just adding sausages in it this time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm adding sausages in this one. You know what I'm saying? That means it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna have to be that one. You know, off of the buzz that uh, the prep movement has going on right now, it's it's got to be stronger. But we're gonna release that 2013, okay. February, March. We'll give you some updates because I don't know they're talking to me about a mixtape right now, so uh, not big on mixtape, but I gotta do it. Gotta get the fans what they want. Yeah, I gotta get the fans what they want. So they want a mixtape. We're gonna have to drop the mixtape, so they might push the album back uh, a little bit. So okay, we definitely tune in. If you if you're not tuned in to the movement, find me on Facebook, Juke Prep. I always spell Juke out for him because it gets confused with J-U-K-E. Hmm. So I always go J-O-O-K. Prep. You can spell that. Juke Prep. Just Google Juke Prep. you find everything. Juked Up Prep. Google that. You can find everything on that, yo. So. Are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Juke30. Instagram? Instagram. Juke Prep. There you have it, folks. And don't forget my website. Website's a monster. We got some new updates, so. But anyway, yeah. All right. And so there you have it. Fans, just to give you a little more information and insight into Juke the Prep. Thank you, Juke, for the interview. Thank you. Thank you. AV Entertainment. Diverse Music Posse. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Shout out to... Shout out to Maserati Film. Shout out to Game Face Entertainment. Shout out to Diverse Music Party. Shout out to Right Films. Shout out to all the major DJs that's working with us right now. Out of state. You know, we're getting a lot of love out of state right now, especially overseas. So I want to thank Europe for the love that they have given us. You know, I really appreciate that. Um, Shout out to the West Coast, East Coast, Down South. Shout out to Louisiana, Marksville, hometown. You know, shout out to New Orleans. Shout out to Miss Nikki Rich, Nikki Rich Show. If you're not tuning in to Nikki Rich Show, you need to get tuned in. Can the Sophistication album still be purchased on iTunes? Yes, ma'am. You can find Sophistication album if you go to iTunes. Click in Juke Sophistication, it'll pop up. It's $10.99 on there. $8.99 on Amazon. So and get the Sophistication album on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Get the Body Rock single on iTunes. And the new album coming soon, 2013, Late Spring.